Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video. I am Rodgon, I'm an artist and illustrator, and today we are going to draw more derpy animals. It'll be derpy animals drawing number three. And I believe, what animals are we going to do today? I had a list somewhere. Huh. Okay, so today we're going to be drawing a koala, a taper, and a simple bunny rabbit. We're just going to try to make it as fluffy and as cute as possible. So let's get to it, shall we? Yeah. All right. I am going to move the mic. I'm going to be recording my face while I draw this. So... Hope you guys don't mind seeing my ugly mug as I talk and I explain what we're going to do with today's drawing. So today's is going to be a little bit different than normal. Uh, every other like derpy animal drawing that we've done, we have uh, had the image and then I showed you guys how to break down the image in order for it to look like the animal. But what we're going to do today is we're going to do a little bit more stylization that we normally do. So let's start with a koala. I'm just gonna go on Google. I'm going to find an image of a koala that I like. Oh, there you go. A very general idea of what a koala looks like. I'm just gonna paste it over here. Boom. Boom. Okay, so we just have to kinda get, we have a little bit of an idea of what the koala look like. So at this point, we are going to, just like in the other videos, we are going to break down the very basic shapes of the koala. Super simple. So it's like a trapezoid. The ears are very round, very big compared to his body. The, the body's like a little pear. And then the arms are more like elongated triangles with a hand. Okay. Eye, eye, nose, muscle, underneath. Okay, so we have a basic understanding of what a koala is supposed to look like. Right? It's at this point, well, we might not keep the actual picture there. Maybe we'll just go sit down a little bit. Both of, both of them. And now we're going to draw our own koala based on kind of these similarities. And then we're going to stylize it a little bit more so you can actually see what you can do with, you know, how to make animals even sillier than you normally would by just tracing them. So in this case, they have a big head, right? And in order to make it even cuter, I'm going to make the head a little bit bigger than it is in the actual. So he has like a pear body. He's going to have big ears. And the reason that I wanted to do a koala this time around was because I saw that movie Sing. And the little koala character is super adorable. Have that. Mm -hmm. The nose. Then, uh, I don't know what we're going to have him do, but this is kind of the range where his mouth would be. Right, and then he's going to have eyes. And what should he be doing? I want to just have him chill in there. And you'll just have him like rocking back and forth. Mm. Nah. Hmm. Let's see. It's had a little bit of a beanbag look to him. Give him a little bit more dynamic posing. And. Alright, since he has pretty long arms, I'm just gonna have him like 
take a pose like a uh, Tommy Hilfiger model. <laughs> okay, I like this. Okay, and I might have to change the face a little bit. We're not gonna go with that. We're gonna have to give him like a smug look. Like, look at me. I am the Zoolander of the zoo. Uh huh. And then, what should he be drinking? It's gonna have um this hand. It's gonna have like a drink. Might have a little umbrella. Boop, 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 boop. Maybe make the nose a little bit bigger, just to stylize it a little bit more. And we're going to stylize the ears even more. So I did want to ask everybody here that's watching this video right now. Uh, I would love for you guys to put in the comment section uh, certain topics that you guys would like for me to teach that I haven't taught yet. Uh, you know, be it you know things about like life or like you know how to progress in certain aspects of you know cartooning or portraiture or whatever you guys want to like actually learn about. Uh, it was going to be incredibly helpful for me in order to move forward on to what to do with this, like with my YouTube channel. Uh, I mean, I've been doing the same thing for about 50 videos, and even though it's perfectly okay, and you know, I like the way that I'm doing it, I do want to like branch off and actually start doing a little bit more like detailed things according to what you guys would like to actually watch. So, do me a favor, and after you guys click that like button, uh, go on to the comment section and just, you know, tell me something that you guys want to learn about. It uh, doesn't have to be uh, super detailed. It can be something as simple as how to draw noses, you know, or how to, like, draw mouths better. You know, stuff like that. Or it can be as detailed as, like, I don't know. How to prepare your portfolio for, you know, going to conventions. How to present yourself, blah, 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 blah. And once again, it's like clockwork. That dog knows exactly when I'm going to start filming. And it's insane. Okay, so now we have our line work. We have our koala. Now let's ink it real fast. Boop gonna go with the vector inking tool in manga studio because I love that just make a vector layer and just ink it just like you normally would oh I, another thing that I would love for you guys to let me know is what are the videos that you guys enjoy the most when it comes down to my channel uh, I know that a lot of you guys enjoy all the sketchbook tours, but obviously, sketchbook tours take a while to make, so they're not able to be made, you know, every week or, you know, every other week even because, well, most of the time sketchbooks take uh, three, four months to finish. So other than those, I would love to know what other videos you guys enjoy from my channel. If you guys like the time-lapse videos, that's awesome. If you guys like the more instructional videos, that's you know pretty cool as well. I just need to know in order to make more of those. And let's see, the arm would go this way. So yeah, uh, I mean, I'm a one-man team over here, guys. So 
any information, any help you guys can give me, I would absolutely love it. <laughs> so in this case, in order to give it the effect of a little bit of fur, uh, I make sure that I have like little feathery parts to this, like to his actual body. When it comes down to the little parts where it's like the end parts of line work, so right here would be like a perfect place. It ends, it parts, and then it goes into a different direction, and then the same thing on the bottom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so we have that. Okay, let's see. Well, koalas have a underside to them, so I'll have to fix that in a second. We have like little claws. Hmm. Okay, boom, boom. That does it for now. Okay. The beauty of the vector line work tool is that I can draw through the objects and then just erase the parts that intersect. Once I found this tool on Manga Studio, it was over. Uh, inking got like a million times faster. So I recommend you guys check it out. The program in itself is really good. You guys will probably notice that I do most of my work in Manga Studio now, instead of Photoshop or, you know, any other like graphics program like Paint Sai or something like that because it just has everything that I need it has absolutely every single aspect of Photoshop that I need and well even though I still have the Creative Cloud because I'm using you know Photoshop and Illustrator for other projects uh, it, like honestly for drawing it's probably been like the best option out there for me Umbrella. What do umbrellas look like? I'm gonna guess they're like this. I'm probably wrong, but screw it. Okay. And they have the little thing sticking out, right? I think so. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, this goes all the way back there. And I'm not worrying too much about the line work. I'm not caring too much about like all the other little tiny details. Uh, more so because I just want to get the idea down. So, have that. I'm gonna draw his lips. They're still furry, so you have to make sure that they look furry. He's not gonna be very happy. It's a grumpy koala. But he's enjoying his drink. The nose. Okay. And then, like I said, we're going to make him a grumpy koala. So the facial expression plays a big, big role into this. Like pretty much every single one of my derpy animal videos, it's all about the facial expression. Uh, you're literally just humanizing the animals that you're drawing. You know, so don't worry about like getting like all the exact looks for the eyes and stuff. Just make sure that it looks funny and just make sure that you actually enjoy what you're doing.
<laughs> and then he's going to have his other leg. Okay, his body would end up here. The leg would go this way. And then we're just going to draw the trees and stuff real fast. Okay. The tree would go up, you know, into the distance. They all eucalyptus leaves, so I gotta just Google real fast what eucalyptus leaves look like, and that'll be pretty close to being done for this one. The other leg has to be shown as well. Okay. Uh, maybe I don't want them looking straight forward. So I'm looking to the side. And then the straw, obviously. <laughs> kind of, <laughs> I really like this one. And then we'll make some drool. Okay, cool. Now let's color this one in real fast. And we're going to use a, a koala over here. So he is literally gray, but not too gray. So we're just going to go with that. I'm going to make a layer underneath. And let's see. I don't know if we can color fill that well. No, because we did a lot of zigzag lines. So we're just going to kind of set our colors in one at a time. An easy way to color is to set that one color down, go in, hopefully all the lines are done, nope. Sometimes when you have that vector layer you can't do that anyway, so you can just select the colors there, line work there, perfect, perfect, perfect should be pretty much everything that needs to be erased and we just erase and we might have to go in and change you know erase a couple little things here and there you know later down the line <sighs> okay so now we can lock the colors by clicking on this little icon right here and hopefully i am actually yeah uh so we're gonna click this little icon right here locks the pixels which means that if you are drawing on the thing you cannot color outside of those pixels outside of the lines that you already drew you can't color so it helps you out a lot with situations like these where you only want to draw within these little areas the only problem is is that you are limited to drawing within that layer which should be perfectly fine when it comes down to actually coloring the, the colors of the panda but for any accent colors that you wouldn't require that sort of stuff, you can go in outside of the lines or just make a new layer and then color those in those layers in case you ever want to change them. Make sure that your line work is all the way at the top because if you don't, you know, you're going to be coloring over the line work and it might not be the best like I am doing right now, apparently. Uh, okay. If you see that you can color over your lines, you're coloring in the wrong layer. Adjust your brushes size-wise in order to fill in bigger areas quicker. Um, unless you're trying to be incredibly precise for some reason. But when it comes down to cartooning, a lot of the times the imperfections are what make the drawing look kind of cool. So don't worry so much about 
you know, getting everything perfect. I have found more often than not, trying to be a perfectionist has cost me countless hours of time and a lot of like headaches. Mm -hmm. Kidoki. Oh, I'm like looking forward to the rabbit because I want to do them with no line work. So we're gonna uh, play with a couple different styles today. This would be more like a, you know, just like an editorial cartoon style. Maybe not even that. Uh, maybe like an animation look to it. You know, super, you know, clean lines, super smooth. No, like, super ultra detailed etching detail or anything. Or shadows. So I guess it would be more like an animation look to it. Okay. Uh, I kind of like the idea of giving him some little patches right here. He doesn't necessarily have them, but for some reason they just... They just look right. Uh, what else? Uh, he has his belly. His belly is white as well. needs to be white probably no the claws are black mm, let's see we already have all the little details there all the little details there uh, I think I mean for right now I think that's gonna be it for this uh, let's go on to a black layer or a very dark gray uh, probably black let's just make it black We're gonna make the nose Okay, so we have that. The nails we said were black as well. And actually, maybe that's the reason we should make it like a gray. There you go. I think that looks a little bit better. And then when if we did add shadows, it's going to be easier to distinguish. But we will add highlights. So... That'll make it look good. Okay, those claws are done. Oh, by the way, I am finished with sketchbook tour number eight. Um, I'm not gonna release it till early December because this one is a little bit uh, special to me. Uh, it's pretty much the first sketchbook tour that I'm going to have that has been pretty much based on somebody else. So the whole, pretty much the whole entire book was based around having the inspiration from somebody else. So you'll see what I mean when I when you see it um, hopefully it's not too corny <laughs> but I have a feeling it's going to be but hopefully the drawings are good enough that you guys don't care okay missing a little line right here okay all right all right all right cool it's looking okay it's looking okay Uh, let's get a little bit more line work right here. So, it, little tiny sections like this 
uh, you might need to just add the lines just to have it stand out. For example, here, all this was too gray, so I had to add it right there. Um, let's make it a yellow umbrella. With orange no sections. Okay, and then I'll make even darker inside. Cool, white straw. Actually, no, let's make it a yellow straw. Because we have too much white already in that area. Okay, cool, cool, cool. It's looking okay. Uh, maybe white. For this area. And we'll make it a pink drink. Okay, this glass part would be reflecting whatever's behind it. So we're gonna go with a light gray for the parts that overlap the panda leg. And here, this section's gonna be white. So you can't get whiter than white. And this part's gonna be erased at 50%. So that should be good. And then whenever we change the color of the background, if we do, you know, it'll actually show. All right, so let's give this a little bit more depth. Ooh. And some little bubbles. Okay, some, oh, we'll add the highlights later. Okay, there you go. This is over the white. We're gonna make a little detail there. Boom. Mm -hmm. So we have this pretty much almost done. Now let's just make uh, another layer underneath that layer and we're gonna do the plants. Uh, plants, I'm just gonna make it this color, fuck it. And we're gonna kinda cheat. We're not gonna research eucalyptus. We are going to do something else. We do have to delete uh, the extra parts first. And we're just gonna do like a slightly painted like leaves in the background. And I'll show you guys how to do like a super cheaty way of doing that. And I guess I am looking at eucalyptus like in the picture. I don't know why I didn't not realize that. Uh, I'm just, <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> so let's grab uh, this color right here. Let's make it a little bit more green. Boom, boom, boom texture brush we're gonna go over this we're gonna turn off all these layers we don't need them and then you're just gonna So we're just gonna resemble a tree instead of actually doing all of the, the leaves. Mm 
And I probably should have done it at the front layer. But I want to get to the next animal. So we're not going to worry too much about that. Okay. <laughs> gonna just select these colors. Boom, 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 boom. We're gonna make a darker shade. And we're gonna do the same thing with the brush. And we're gonna make this opacity of the brush a little bit smaller. And then we're just gonna. Just uh, making it kind of like chaotic so it doesn't look like there's a pattern. We'll do the trick and then after that just choose your background. And this was a pretty simple easy way to make a textured background. So we're gonna go with, uh, let's make it into a sunset, why not? That. And then we're going to add a white background with a slight gradient to white. All right, let's make this darker. <laughs> and we'll make this darker. Tonal corrections, slow corrections. Okay. There you go. And if you want to add another level of extra detail, you can just make some leaves overlapping the lines. Make sure that your brush is back to 100% before you do that. And there you go. Derpy animal number one. Let's add a little bit of highlights. Because I like highlights. The nails would have highlights because they're shiny. Other hard surfaces that have a slight reflection to them. Uh, you could add a little bit of reflection to his to his fur if you really wanted to, because fur does have a little bit of shine, and this would have shine, and the glass would have shine. Final detail. Dun, 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 dun. Make this huge. And some ambient lighting by making just a white layer. And little tiny details you see that could be fixed. This fix. Mm. Okay, brush density. Da. Okay. And there you go. You have yourself a derpy koala. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, so now we are going to just store the hell out of all these layers. Boom. And now we get to go with a different animal. What's the next animal? Uh, we're gonna go with a taper. Tapers are really, really, really cool. Um, mostly because they look like little chubby anteaters. So we're gonna copy and paste just like the other one. 
And as you can see, it kind of looks just like a really derpy, piggy kind of animal. Uh, so we're going to try a different approach to this one. Let's see. Okay. His body looks like a little bean bag, right? Then he has its head and its little snout and its head it has a forehead. And he has little legs. We're going to make him a little stubby, this one. Has a little tail. And he has his back legs. And he's going to be looking at something on the ground. I don't know what it's going to be. So you have that, and then his snout kind of tapers in a little bit. <laughs> Get it? Taper, taper, tapers. <laughs> and his body color split right there. And from this leg to this leg, like that. Okay. All right, so we have a taper ready to be inked. And then we'll make this a little bird. Cool. So now we have a little taper. Now let's just ink them. And we'll go with a different approach for the bunny because the bunny is going to be like nice and fluffy. I'll just do something similar that we did from the last one, this one. I'm going to use another one of the vector layers. And with this one, it's going to be a little different. I'm going to start with the eyes. Because the eyes are going to be a big part of this one. Okay, into the snout. And we're just going to go detail by detail until we finish the illustration. He's going to be looking at the little bird, so the eyes would be right there, right there. The belly, front foot, back foot, tail, and then, nope, nope, there we go. Mm-hmm. The ears are nice and round. And they have a little bit of depth to them. Erase the overlapping shapes that we don't need. Not this one, not this one. Remember, overlapping shapes are what's gonna give your character depth. You know. So make sure to do it properly. He's going to be sinking into the sand because they're kind of heavy animals. Yeah, if you ever get a chance to actually like see a taper at the zoo or something like that, 
Uh, you won't be disappointed. They're really derpy and they're really cute. Mm -hmm. I'm adding this line so it adds a little bit of more depth to the trunk. Uh, we're not going to worry about these because we can just do that with the color. Then a little bit of shadows, obviously, because he is a big animal. So he would cast a pretty big cast shadow. Okay. Cool. Now let's draw the little bird. No particular bird in general, just a little tiny bird. He's just going to be sick. gonna be looking at him like what the hell dude all right so now we have we have our taper let's add some color and like I said we don't want to we gotta blah, 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 blah. we don't have to worry too much about like drawing the line that separates the color so we're just gonna fill it in with a dark gray so we can still see the lines I'm gonna go with a bigger brush for this one boom 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 Boom. Fill in. Okay, we're going to rasterize our layer. We're going to select everything outside that layer. Doki. Selection, expand selected area. I like to do this to get rid of any little tiny artifacts that are left over. Then we're going to lock those pixels, make a new layer for the white underneath. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to color here. We're going to color these two areas. And since this is white, we don't need this gray in this little area. And we don't need gray here either. And then the same thing, make a selection around it, all the stuff you don't need. Selection, expand, one pixel. Clear. Not that one. Clear. Boom. So now we have that selection done. Fixed little tiny minuscule details that you see could be fixed. Uh, for example, in this one, I want to make the hoops a little bit lighter just so they stand out from the rest of the body. Mm -hmm. He does have a little bit of white when it comes down to the tips of his ears. So let's give him that one. And for the most part, the taper is pretty much done. Uh, let's make a little birdie. Oh no, let's make him yellow. Let's turn this off. Little birdie, we're just gonna do everything in one layer. Boom. Gonna give them little tiny accents of color. And give them a lighter color belly. And a gray. 
gray color pick. Okay. Now we do the same thing. We select the rounded. Selection, expand, select area by one. Go back to that little birdie and then delete the rest. And then just fill in the little areas that are needed. Cool. So we have our taper. Let's turn off the sketch layer. Uh, let's give it a little bit of a background. In this case, for this one, we shall make this guy. Come on. Come on. Oh, just because I don't have it open. Uh, we're going to make this like a sky blue. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to give it a little bit of a gradient in a different layer. Uh, we're going to give it some clouds by just grabbing the textured pen. Okay, we're going to lock these clouds. We're going to make a slightly darker color too much and then just give them some shadows underneath because obviously the sun is hitting them from the top of them right so even clouds have shadows let's turn off this there and we're gonna blur them so filter blur window filter blur gosh and blur Gonna blur them a little bit so they look like it's behind them. And the last thing that needs to be done is to set a little ground layer. So let's make it with like sand. Okay, lock those layers, make it lighter, drop the opacity, and then you can just give it a little bit of like a fun. Just a little bit of like random lines here and there. Maybe smudge them together. And you create a texture that wasn't there before. And since we didn't give the little birdie a shadow, let's just go back and give him a little bit of shadow. Huh. This, 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 why is this? Okay, there you go. Cool. So now we have a derpy animal number two, and this is a taper. Whee, taper. So this dude. Okay, so we're gonna go with our last animal. Uh, our last animal is going to be a bunny. So let's see, let's do the same thing we did with these. Select all these, uh, select them again, drag them to a folder. So we have our folder for that one. And then one more time, boom. And only this time we're gonna do it a little different. We're literally going to just paint the bunny. So I wanna make it as cute as possible. So we're just gonna make a new layer. Uh, bunnies are relatively simple. Yeah, uh, let's see. Copy image. Boom. That's like the tiniest bunny ever. Okay. So literally, bunnies are just a little ball. I'm just going to dim this a little. They're just a little ball. And then just kind of like just play with that. So they're like a little ball of fur. All right. And they kind of squish down because of gravity. 
Then they have another little ball for the head. Then they have their ears. Now it goes a little bit farther up. Cool. Uh, maybe you make this a little bit smaller. A little squishier. And the ears a little bit fluffier. All right. So we have a good basis for a bunny. And let's see. Yeah, they do have a little fairy tail. So I'm going to give them a little fairy tail. So from this point on, it's kind of up to you how you want to go about it. We could, in my case, I just want to make it super cute. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to make a layer for an eyeball. I'm going to make a stupidly arched label. Like, there you go. Right, and I'm going to make another stupidly large eyeball that protrudes from the other side. But since I don't really need everything there, there you go. I'm going to lock these. I'm going to start adding little tiny details like lighting and I'm going to smudge it uh, blur some under lighting and for this I'd like to just like have the brush at like 50% opacity uh, that way you can just layer whatever you need So we have that. Now the next detail that we have to worry about is the nose. So we're gonna just choose a pink. Now we'll work our way back up to 100% opacity. And the nose kind of goes right here. Okay, and kind of goes into the mouth. Nah, I just want to keep it like that. All right, cool. Now, what we got to do is just to give some definition to the rabbit. So we are going to start painting little tiny details. So behind the ears, kind of curls in. Um, little tiny feet. And it goes into the tail. And then the ears. Mm -hmm. and as you can see, I'm not laying the color down super, super thick mostly because I just want to kind of get a, a gauge of where everything's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. At this point I'm using the what is it? The watercolor brushes? Uh, they give you a slightly smoother look to everything. Like to whenever you lay it down, it blends in the two colors that you have selected. So it should be nice and simple for you to just kind of like lay on colors very, very, very softly.
Mm -hmm. uh, we need to lay down a little bit of shadow on this side of the ear because it's in the distance. Uh, let's make a new layer. We're going to make this relatively black. Start grounding the bunny. We're going to take this layer, uh, the body layer. We're going to copy it. We're going to lock the pixels. We are going to choose like a pink. We're going to fill it completely. And you'll see why right now. I'm going to set this to multiply, drop the opacity, and we're going to use the gradient eraser tool. And we're going to like just erase a little bit of the top layer. That way it gives us an environmental look to it. You know, so if we up this, it'll look like it's higher contrasting. If we drop it a little bit less. Okay. So perfect. Mm, let's lock this. Let me choose a slightly darker color. Brush 800. And maybe erase a little bit more. Okay, that works. Now we go back to this layer and we keep on adding a little bit of shadows until it starts looking a little bit more like it's grounded on the floor. And you'll see for the final touch, we're going to do something kind of cool. Um, well, I guess we could just do it right now. Uh, I'm going to finesse this a little bit. So it looks a little bit smaller. Okay. I'm going to have to add a little bit of shadows under around the eyes. That's too much. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now for the little final detail. And this is something that I like to do with anything that's free and I'm painting it. I go to the smudge tool, I use the fingertip tool. I unlock this and then I just start adding little tiny hints of fur around the edges. You can do it to the inside of the detail as well, if it overlaps. It's a very simple way to just add either a rim lighting, since you added a little bit of a shadow, and also to give a little bit of texture to the drawing so it doesn't look flat. It is tedious and it takes a while to do it, but it makes the drawings look a lot better. So I recommend that you do it, even if it does take a little while. I'm going a little bit faster than normal because, you know, like I've done it a couple times.
Boom, 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 boom. And there you go. So now we have our furry little bunny. And I mean, the last couple things that we can do is add to an environmental lighting. So take this color, make it darker, make a big old brush. And add a brown to it. Next layer, we're gonna grab this color, we're gonna make it lighter this time, we're gonna make an even bigger brush. And we're just gonna add a little bit of a gradient, not too much. It seems like I need to add even more shadow to this to make it look even better. Just to add a little bit extra level of depth. There you go, now it looks grounded. We're gonna do the same thing with this. Just gonna do some indications of grass in the background so it looks like there's something behind it. We're gonna give some environmental lighting to it. So we're gonna make a white brush. We're gonna make it really big, really, really big. And just kind of splash it here and there. And then on top of that, we're going to add super bright highlights. And this is what makes it super, super cute. We'll go in. And maybe even one more layer. Which we're gonna drop to like 30%. Maybe less than that. Just to add even more highlights to it. And there you go. We have our super, super, super cute, cute, cute bunny. Next level of detail, if you really wanted to, is to add little fur elements to it. But we dropped the opacity on that one. So you can just, and the parts where it overlaps with the darker color. little tiny parts like these. Grab that and then blur it. Blur it in the direction it's supposed to. And there you go. You have a little derpy bunny. Derp. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, let's see, maybe get rid of this. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, let's get back to the normal screen thingy. Boom. All right. Well, so now you see three different ways. Well, kind of two different ways to make uh, some derpy animals. You can either paint them or you can just draw them and make them look like cartoons from an animated series. So that's derpy animals number three, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope the video wasn't way too long. It seems like it's a little bit over an hour. So hopefully you guys actually got entertained. I didn't talk as much in this one, mostly because I didn't really have anything to say. Um, I promise to make these more entertaining for you guys in the future though. So hit that like button if you guys like what I'm doing. If you guys want to see some more videos, make sure to leave your suggestion down in the comment section. And I will see you guys in the next video. Later. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you guys want to see some more of my stuff, make sure to click on the links to the left and to the right for more content from your favorite artist, Rodgon. And if you guys want to come support on Patreon, make sure to follow me on Patreon for some goodies, posters, prints, whatever, and I'll see you guys in the next one.